Welcome to Cybersecurity Awareness TV, episode number 446, recorded January 6, 2024. Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to Cybersecurity Awareness TV. Join me, Professor Mac Jackson Jr., as we navigate through the digital landscape, gearing up for a thrilling ride through the cybersecurity tips and news events that can protect you and your family from cyber crimes. Re folks, remember to subscribe, like, and stay ahead of the cyber security game and defend your business. You can find out more about my company by going to my website at macjacksonjr.com. That's macjacksonjr.com. In today's episode, we're talking of cybersecurity news, tips you could use, story around our community and around the world. And of course, our second segment, we're getting to the FBI warnings on scams that can affect you and your family. Folks, 2024 is opening up a new realm of cyber threats for our community here locally in Las Vegas and around the world. Artificial intelligence poses an alarming threat um, in the arsenal of cyber crimes, right? Um, it's a cautionary measure that companies like CloudStrike and others, including law enforcement, have warned business community and citizens of our country about the threats of AI. With the growing rise of AI accessibility, even those with minimum coding experience can become very sophisticated cyber hackers. Now we've talked about this before and I mentioned it as well to my students at the universities as well. Back in the early 80s when we started out in hacking and programming, it took a lot of time. We had to develop the actual code to be hackers and programmers. Nowadays, in the 21st century, hackers, someone with no experience at all, can buy a malware application off the dark net and cause irreparable damage to organizations, to individuals. It makes it very easy now going online and loading a AI programmer software to create an avatar. You can go and use things like ChatGPT and other types of generative text uh, creations online and create these type of coding f for yourself or for your business. And on the good side, but on the bad side, there's a lot of illicit activities that are going on with this. AI-driven threats now pose um, a increased concern to, to every area of our country in the U.S. Um, according to 2024 about the U.S. Justice Department, this rise will cause a great damage to our upcoming election in 2024, but not just here in the U.S., folks. The elections across the world, India, Iran, Russia, China, they all have this threat of fake AIs and information that can pose threats to the election. Folks, there's a story that I have for you. I'd like you to take a look at that. First story of the year here comes to us from a CBS News Morning News. This new year is sure to bring more improvements, advancements in artificial intelligence, but it's not all for the good. Last fall, FBI Director Christopher Wray warned about the risk of AI falling into the wrong hands. Right now, where it's most dangerous is essentially taking junior varsity uh, bad actors and bringing them to the varsity level. But in fairly short order, we're going to be seeing AI taking the varsity level athletes and taking them to a whole nother level of dangerousness. Not good. And the pros who follow this sort of thing say, of course, the threats are increasing in this year in particular because of the election. So let's talk about it. Sean Henry is a former FBI executive assistant director leading criminal and cybersecurity investigations worldwide. And he's now security chief at CrowdStrike. Sean, I'm worried. Thank you very much for being here. I think we all are. Yeah. yeah. How worried should I be about these improvements in AI? What are the threats? Well, I think this is a major concern for everybody. Um, AI has really put this uh, tremendously powerful tool in the hands of the average person, and it has made them incredibly more capable. So the adversaries are using AI, this new innovation, to overcome different cybersecurity capabilities to gain access into corporate networks, but they're also using it through misinformation, the creation of videos, audio, text files that are incredibly believable and that have people looking at something, seeing something, believing that is true when in fact it's been manufactured, oftentimes by a foreign government. So that goes to the heart of the election question. Mm. How can people vet information, and we'll help them vet it obviously, but they're gonna see a lot of stuff on social media, 
vet what they're seeing related to the election? You know, people always have to look at the source of information. You can't just look at something and accept it as true. You've got to verify where it came from. Who's telling the story? What is their motivation? And can you verify it through multiple sources? It's incredibly difficult because people, when they're using video, they've got 15 or 20 seconds. They don't have the time or oftentimes don't make the effort mm. to go source that data, and that's a trouble. Among the things that we need to be worried about when it comes to artificial intelligence, do you believe that this 2024 election causes concern for all of the American people? We, we've seen foreign adversaries target the U.S. election for, for many years. It was not just 2016. They targeted back in 20, 2008. China did. We've seen Russia, China, Iran engaged in this type of misinformation and disinformation over the years. They're absolutely going to use it again hmm. here in 2024. And by the way, this is not just a U.S. problem. There are more than 40 democratic elections around the globe. Mexico, South Africa, wow. Taiwan, India. Democracy is on the ballot. Democracy is going to be challenged globally. Wow. Well, you know, we as journalists have to source things and look at things, but I, I don't know that the average American knows how to do that. Can you just describe for people what they should be doing to source the information? I, I, I think it's it's looking at where the information is coming from. Is it a, a valid media outlet? Who's the person? Is there a particular objective that somebody might have? Is it coming from a political party? Is it coming from an independent source? You're right. The average person doesn't have the, the full background to do that. Um, but I think going forward, people have to understand where information is coming from yeah. because there are people out there who have nefarious intent and mm. it cre creates some huge problems. One of the big worries that people have, and it's a deep emotional worry, is that somehow the uh, voting machines themselves will be hacked. We've seen a lot of talk about this, lawsuits, all the rest. Now, these voting machines, if you go look at them, they're not connected to the Internet. They're locally sourced and there's a paper trail. However, AI changes the game in a variety of ways. Is there a way in which a, a voting machine or a vote count can be hacked using AI? So a AI, again, provides a, a very uh, capable tool in the hands of people who might not have high technical skills. Um, they can write code, they can create malicious software, phishing emails, et cetera. I think that our system in the United States is very decentralized. Uh, there are individual pockets that might be targeted, like voter registration rolls, et cetera. I don't think from a voter tabulation problem at a wide scale to impact an election, I don't think that that's a, a major that's issue. That's great. I like to hear that. Also, decentralized is one of my favorite words. It's just basically chaotic <laughs> mess. Right. Mean. Like, sometimes my parenting is a bit decentralized. <laughs> so, yeah. Sean, we appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, you so much in. for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Folks, like we've seen in this report, we must always take a look at information that you receive from any digital source. Vet it first. Now, information comes to us every second. We'll get a new piece of data. Someone's sending us information to review or to acknowledge. Any information you get, you must vet it first. Think before you click. Make sure it's from a source that you, that you know. And if you don't know, trust but verify, folks. That's what we do here. In our second story, the proliferation of this open source AI, it's, it's, rise, it's, it's creating an increasingly interest of every aspect of our business, especially in our security, security systems around the world. As hackers have misused this information, there are software programs that are used to create this type of AI using open source. Now, what does this mean? When we have a open source system, that means everyone can contribute to in its design and development. As a programmer myself and my colleagues, we can add to the body of knowledge, if you would, when it comes to open source applications. The problem with this is that not everyone that's entered into the world of making the knowledge base better is who they say they are. They could be bad guys and adversaries as well. And they're adding code into the AI that can do illicit things as well without us knowing it. That's why we have to ensure that we have coders and ethical hackers like my colleagues, myself and my colleagues that are involved in all these types of open source coding and programming to add a sense of morality and logic to protect our security when we're using it. The Federal Trade Commission mandates now that all businesses, right, all businesses that are publicly traded, 
have a cybersecurity, that's right folks, a cybersecurity policy set up that, they, that the public can review and see. So what this means folks is that publicly traded companies have to have a cybersecurity policy in place or some sort of cybersecurity strategy in place to protect their customers and their vendors data. It's very, very important now. It's like when the FTC um, and other agencies mandates that corporations have proper books and accounting structures in place so there is any fraud going on within their accounting financial books the same thing now applies when it comes to cyber security government agencies and of course other industry regulators as well wanting to mandate companies have these types of setup with their organizations to protect customers data and protect this information because of this growing threat I have another story I'd like to share with you, coming to us from CNBC Television. Joining me now to discuss is Amit Yoran, the CEO of cybersecurity company Tenable. Amit, welcome. Um, so machine learning in cybersecurity is not new. What can AI do to solve this problem of perhaps open source code being contributed from questionable sources? Well, I think AI, while it holds a lot of promise, uh, is really a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's reasonable to expect that adversaries, that hackers, will be using AI to more rapidly identify vulnerabilities, more rapidly develop exploit code to weaponize and take advantage of those vulnerabilities, and conduct very large-scale and, and highly targeted attacks against American infrastructure, uh, American businesses, and steal intellectual property and do all sorts of bad things. The inverse of that is true, too. We can use AI, as Tenable has been doing, to identify which pieces of software have vulnerability, how severe those vulnerabilities are, and what can be done to help security teams understand both those vulnerabilities and how to prioritize uh, remediations and activities that can help them reduce risk. I want to take a step back and talk about Tenable itself, you guys had results about a month ago. Right now, enterprise software seems to be hitting this stabilizing moment after a rough couple of quarters, and you seem to express that in your call as well. Cybersecurity is not immune from the impact of this macro environment. What are you seeing in uh, customer willingness to expand their engagement with you? I know you had some good things to say about Tenable One and, and that package that you've got, more people adopting that, but where's the, where's the tension? Where's the friction? Yeah, well, first, we're seeing very strong demand broadly in cybersecurity. This is an issue. It's a particular concern for organizations. The SEC recently issued new rulings which require public companies in the U.S. to disclose their cybersecurity risk management practices and also disclose breaches. Now, that's gonna cause a lot of executives, a lot of CEOs, a lot of audit and risk committees and boards of directors to ask questions, to pay more attention to cybersecurity. How at risk are we? How secure are we? Are we vulnerable? So broadly speaking, uh, these issues aren't going away. Demand is strong. We also believe that in the current macro, we have the opportunity to provide cost reduction and vendor consolidation. When you move to platform-based security like Tenable offers to our customers, you can help address not only traditional vulnerabilities, but you can look at access and entitlements. You can look at cloud security and you can bring uh, multiple disciplines of security together to provide both more effective security and help customers reduce cost. And there's news in this space all along. So I mean, uh, hold on for just a minute. We've got an alert on ChatGPT and OpenAI. So, folks, as we continue, as of 2025, the federal government has enforced and mandated that commercial vendors working with the Department of Defense must pass a certification under the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. It's a Cybersecurity Model Maturity Model Certification, CMMC regulations. This certification confirms that the vendor must meet stringent cybersecurity standards and protocols to protect sensitive governmental data. This move aimed to reinforce defending uh, industry-based bases and other governmental agencies and municipalities against a growing threat of cyber attacks. And this is a good way to keep our supply chain under the auspice of um, regulations and standards. So folks, if you are looking to do business with the federal government, and again, if you are a, commercial, a publicly traded company, 
you must have proper cybersecurity protocols in place. And again, we'll talk about that, what you could do about that at the end of this, um, at the end of the segment. But to continue this story, folks, take a look at a uh, story that we have here for you coming from KTLA 5 News. Cybersecurity tips from the guy who keeps celebrities, athletes, and executives safe from online threats. Rich Jamero explains in today's TechSmart. Celebrities, athletes, executives, and other high net worth individuals are constantly at risk for hacking. Recently, I talked to the guy who protects them to get the cybersecurity tips we can all use. Chris Pearson is on a mission to protect people from cyber attacks. We'll protect them from privacy harms, from cybersecurity harms, protect their entire home and home networks, and then be there for their concierge. His company, Black Cloak, works with high net worth individuals like celebrities and athletes. But we can all use the same tips to protect our digital world. What about the average person? The average person still has a lot to lose, right? They have their identity, they have their social security number. They also have finances that they really do need to keep a tight handlehold on. First up, up unique strong passwords, especially on key accounts like email, financial, health, and social media. Then lock it down with dual factor authentication. What it does is it prevents a bad guy from logging in if they know your username and password. As for software updates, Pearson recommends setting aside time every other week to install them. If your device is vulnerable, and software always has vulnerabilities, but if it's vulnerable in terms of major vulnerability, then every other step that you're doing to protect it isn't going to work. Virus and malware protection can only go so far, so be cautious when it comes to clicking links and attachments in emails and texts, especially those that seem to originate from a friend. They're trying to just flip your brain to move over from that rational thinking side into the more impulsive, there's a threat, there's something I have to do quickly side, and that usually spells disaster. Back up your data. It's your best protection against a ransomware attack and stay on top of the latest cybersecurity news. The more you know about the latest hacks, the better you can protect yourself. While headlines focus on major companies and celebrities, everyday people are also at risk. We're seeing all of these things play out because they're tried and true, they work, and they can be applied to a mass population. As you can see, folks, cyber threats are something that we must take serious for every business and individual. If you're a parent out there, want to protect your kids from online predators and cyberbullying, to CEOs of corporations and organizations wanting to make sure that their staff has proper cybersecurity training and protocols in place. My company, Vanderson Cyber Group, empowers businesses to create a fortress of cybersecurity defenses and offers a bespoke employee training security program tailored to identify and mitigate cyber attacks. Our training modules are enhanced to provide your workforce with the means and the needs and the education to defend your data assets against cyber threats. By equipping employees with this knowledge and tools to recognize potential threats, threats and risk and respond efficiently, Vanderson Cyber Group can transform your business into a proactive fortress protecting your customers' data. So definitely, folks, contact me and my organization, Vanderson Cyber Group at VandersonCyberGroup.com or my website at MacJacksonJR.com. It's MacJacksonJR.com. Folks, hackers are always looking for ways to exploit data and information from us. We must make 2024 a year that we are protecting our data and make sure our employees are trained and educated to defend ourselves against these types of cyber threats. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> Hello folks, this is Mac Jackson Jr. from Vanderson Cyber Group. The problem with businesses today is that they are affected by cyber attacks from around the world, but companies are not sure of what to do. Normally, they are reactive instead of proactive. But folks, cyber attacks can affect your bottom line and will affect you financially, legally, and your business reputation. Here at Vanderson Cyber Group, we can help you develop a policy by training your employees on what to do if they are involved in a cyber attack and how to mitigate it and fight against it. Folks, we call it here, hashtag stay cyber woke. And that's Vanderson Cyber Group here in Las Vegas and around the world. You can reach me folks at vandersoncybergroup.com 
or my website, MacJacksonJrJr.com as well. Here locally, 702-868-0808. Give us a call today, folks. We must fight back. Hey folks, welcome back to Cybersecurity Awareness TV with me, Professor Mac Jackson Jr. I have a couple cybersecurity tips again I want to emphasize for you to think about in 2024. Again, strong passwords, that's the first thing. Make sure you have strong passwords in all the applications that you use. Use two-factor authentication for these apps and websites that you visit when applicable, especially for financial institutions and your bank. Also 2024, Freeze your credit, folks. Freeze your credit from all the credit reporting agencies. It's really simple and easy to do. You can always unfreeze it when you're looking to apply for a loan. When you're traveling, make sure you use a VPN, virtual private network, on all coffee shops or hotel rooms you stay if you need to have Wi-Fi access or Internet access to um, with your smart device. And again, folks, another simple one is your smartphone. Make sure you turn off your Wi-Fi when you're not using it when you're traveling, especially when you're traveling, make sure it's turned off. And if you're in doubt, check your ISP, your, your plan that you may have. You may have unlimited. If you have unlimited internet access, then you should definitely turn your Wi-Fi off. There's no need to having it on because your phone is trying to jump to internet. You never know what kind of suspicious hotspots it will try to attack. These are just some of the things, folks, you could do to protect yourself for the start of 2024. Definitely contact me for other cybersecurity standards and protocols we can set up for your business, folks. It's very important, as you can see from our stories today, that your company should maintain its proper cybersecurity protocols to protect your data from any cyber threats. That's all we have for you today, folks, from our show, Cybersecurity Awareness TV. We want you to definitely look at our website and visit us on all the social medias, including YouTube. Remember to share, like, and subscribe, folks, and watch us on the Roku channel as well. I want to also give thanks and praises to our studio here, WWDB-TV as well. All right, folks, have a good one. We'll see you next time.